Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the SP 500, and today is Cody Incorporated, ticker C O T Y. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. First up, this market cap is 6.3 billion, enterprise value of 10.5 billion. So you can see a significant amount of leverage on this business of about $4 billion, which is quite huge compared to the equity being shown. They operate in the personal products industry. Cody Incorporated um, manufactures, markets, distributes, sells beauty products worldwide, has prestige and customer beauty segments. So you're talking about fragrances, cosmetics, skin and body care treatments. Looks like they list some brands or these stores. Yeah. So there's a brand Burberry, Bogetta, um, Calvin Klein, Cavalli, Chloe, Davidoff, Escada, Gucci, Hugo Boss, Kylie Jenner, Lacoste. So it looks like these are some of the brands they sell under. Also has other brands, um, or these are retailers that they work with, Adidas, Beckham, BioColor, Bajors. Quite a number of brands, usually branded um, fragrances and cosmetics tend to be very high margins. We'll see how that plays out, see if this turns into a high quality company. The beta is quite high at 2.0 or 1.99 and a high share turnover. So I, I tend to hesitate that this might be high quality, but we'll see what we can see from the return on invested capital chart. Now, what I like to see on a 20 year history is one year of, or zero years of lost it over 20 year period. Now it looks like we have about 12 years of history on this one and it's not great. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years of losses and you have one, two, three, four, five years of profit. So you've lost more, you've lost money in more years than you've made money. And it looks like you've lost more money total than you've made. This is almost instantaneously a sign of a bad company. Um, I would never invest in something with this sort of return on invested chart unless the future is going to be significantly different. If this is a startup period, that's one thing. But to see something like this, you're really negative. I mean, They've lost money for four straight years from 2017 to 2021. That's very, very poor. Even in the years that they're profitable, the return on invested capital never gets into the double digits. It looks like your peak return on invested capital was 5%. Um, so very poor numbers here on return on invested capital. <laughs> now let's see here for key statistics. PE of 24, again, this is a very high PE ratio. Tenure median returns are all negative. This is what I'm saying where it looks like they've lost more money than they've made. Very bad sign. Not something that I would be interested in for an investment here. It looks like a very poor quality company. You do see these high gross profit margins. So it's really curious that they have high gross profit margins, but poor EBIT margins, poor free cash flow, and they're getting these returns. Why do you have such high gross profits, but such poor returns? Something very strange with the management of this company is going on. Um, the revenue's hardly growing. Um, looks like 1% a year, but you're growing assets at 7% a year. That doesn't make much sense. It's going to cause you to get worse returns over time. And the PE ratio is at 24. So you're paying a 24 PE ratio for something that can't make steady money. Now, that PE ratio is going to be distorted because, of course, the price to earnings ratio, the earnings are all over the place. I mean, look, you go from 42 earnings cents per share in this year, losing money, 64, 48, losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money, eight cents. So yeah, I mean, you multiply by eight cents, like it could be that it's just the trailing 12 month numbers don't make any sense. But I mean, look, even when you go to something like price to sales basis, price to book value, price to sales of 1.2 on this sort of free cash flow margin isn't that good. So either way, the company looks expensive. The returns are quite poor. Um, to save you, the listeners, some time and, and some energy, this is just not a company I'd be interested in. So I usually do longer videos, but I'm going to stop this one here because I don't think it's worth the time for me. I don't think it's worth the time for you. Um, basically, everything looks bad here, and there's nothing that looks redeeming. So for me, um, Cody Incorporated is a pass, a void for both valuation and on quality, just not something that I am interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see some videos of companies that I think are interesting, you need to be subscribed, and I encourage you to check out the playlist of S&P 500 companies that I've already done. I've already covered over 100 companies where I have used this quick FS tool to analyze them, determine if they're high quality, determine if they're at a good valuation, and I'm trying to provide that value to you. So. 
hit that subscribe button. And if you like this tool, this quickfs.net tool, I have a link in the description below where you can use my affiliate link to sign up. And if you do, I would get a commission if you sign up, but this is the tool I use myself. I don't recommend anything that I don't use myself. And as you can see, this is a great way to analyze companies on the go, quickfs.net. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.